clipless pedals or flat pedals? Which ones to go for? Which are best? And well, what are the differences? Any newcomer to cycling probably started out on a pair of these, whether that was on your mountain bike or a road bike. And there's a very good reason for that. Yeah, but as you get more confident on your bike, you might have upgraded to a pair of clipless pedals. And uh, well, you might have acquired some grazes and some bruises as well from all the falls and tumbles at the traffic lights. But don't worry because we've all been there. In my opinion, clipless pedals is the best upgrade you can make to your road bike and it will transform your experience. So in this video, we're going to take you through why we think clipless pedals is the number one upgrade you can make to your road bike. Yeah, and why you should take that leap of faith. But before we jump into the video, why don't you head over to the GCN app where we're doing a poll. Do you ride clipless or flat pedals? Let's start with flat pedals, the go-to for any beginner or young cyclist. They're great if you start to wobble or lose balance, you can easily put your foot down. They're also great for commuters and city bikes too. You can just jump on in whatever shoes you're wearing, your trainers, your work shoes, or even high heels. Although I would prefer to leave the high heels for the dance floor, but whatever floats your boat, they're great and anybody can use them. Oh, and when you stop at traffic lights or a stop sign, there is no risk of you rather embarrassingly toppling over in a line of traffic wondering why you've chosen to have an unplanned rest in the middle of the road. If you started out riding a mountain bike and then transferred to road, then you're probably used to riding flat pedals. A lot of mountain bikers actually prefer to use flats. And I mean, check out the control they have with flat pedals. But man, on, I guess a downside to flat pedals is that you're not secure on the pedal, meaning your foot could slip around and slip off. And I reckon, in my personal opinion, you're not going to get the power you can access with flat pedals as you can with clipless pedals because you can access the full pedal rev. Yeah, that's true. And another thing to think about is the shoes you're wearing. These trainers, for example, do not have the same support as cycling shoes do. Cycling shoes tend to be a lot more stiff and give you more support to put the power down. And another very important thing is that when you go to the cafe and order your coffees, it's far easier to do it in trainers than cycling shoes. I mean, Hank, have you ever tried to carry a tray of hot coffees in cycling shoes? I have. Didn't end well. No, I didn't. It's no. a bit like when you've got ski boots on. You're just all over the place, aren't you? Or high heels, in my case, yeah. I haven't tried all that either. But you have. No. Right, <laughs> enough looking at flat pedals. I reckon we should move on to clipless. He's definitely worn high heels before. <laughs> Now, it has to be said, there are loads and loads of different clipless pedal options. But today, I'll be using these ones here. Now, you might be wondering why they're called clipless pedals. Now, back in the 1970s, the riders were using toe clips. And then they got removed, and these gained the name clipless pedals. Now, in my personal opinion, they are genuinely the best upgrade you can make because you're utilizing the upstroke of the pedals. So you're not just stamping down on the pedals, as you would with flat pedals. The also, the other benefit is that your foot is stable. You know exactly where it's going on your bike and thus you're more at one with the bike. And we're going to be using power in those tests just to see the numbers and the changes. Right, enough of my babbling. Let's get on with the test, shall we? Okay, so our first test is going to be a max power sprint test where we're going to sprint for around 10 15 seconds and measure our max power that we can produce on both pedals. So I'm going to go first with my flat pedals. Hopefully, my foot stays on the pedal and I don't whack my shin. Right, I'm going to count myself in in three, two, one, go! Oh! Right, next up, Hankston, here he is, good luck. Ooh. Right, I already feel not so as one with the bike. Trying to get my feet in the right place for this 10 second sprint. But here goes, do my best. Right. Five, 
four, three, two, one. Go! That just didn't feel good. But let's wait and see the results. Flat pedals done, now it's time to whack the clipless on. There you go. And our cycling shoes. You're not gonna do it for me? You can ask for your pedals, don't you? Yeah, I do, just about. Right. Let's get these pedals off. Right, it's time for the clipless pedals. See what power I can do with these when I'm hoping. It's a little bit more than the flat pedals. So, count myself in. In three, two, one, go! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that was definitely more. Woo! Guess it's time to see what Hank can do next. Right. My turn with clipless pedals. Here we go. Power's on. Five, four, three, two, one. Eight hundred watts. Nine hundred. Eleven hundred. Yeah. That's all I had. Eleven hundred. Right, so that was our peak power test done. Let's talk about the flat pedals first. How did you find that, Hank? I've got to say, it is it's really strange being on it flat is, yeah. pedals on a superbike. And I just didn't feel at one with the bike. I didn't feel connected. Uh, my feet were all over the place. I couldn't get my feet in the right position, um, you know, on the, like, the toe end of my foot. And it just didn't feel as good. No, I have to agree. And I just didn't feel like I could do a proper max effort. And I was always conscious, like, what if my foot slips off the pedal and I hit my shin? I was very scared about that. But what were your numbers on the flat pedals? What so max power did you hit? on the flat pedals, didn't do so well. 840 watts. That's not too bad. I'd be happy with that. I did 704 watts. That's Pretty good it's, still. It's average, it's, it's all right, but, I'll, I'll take it. But hit me with the clipless. So the clipless pedals felt much better, I have to say, and I did 896 watts. Pretty that happy a, with that, yeah, not bad, that yeah? Yeah, good sprint. Now, would that win some races? Probably, Probably not. Probably would. No. <laughs> uh, when I hit the clipless pedals, I did 1,268 watts. So... Um, it's quite a bit of a jump between... a massive the jump there. ...and the clipless. But I'm so. interested to see what it's like on a hill. There's something a little bit longer to see if we can kind of hold the sustainable power. And I'm I feel like on the, on the climb, you know, you get out of the saddle and you can, that, I feel like that's when you can really feel the upstroke and the pulling up on the pedal. So it will be interesting to see how we go on that. Right. Next Let's, up, hill test. Do you know a hill we can do it on? I do. Thought you might. Got one in, one in mind. Great. Come on, Manon. Come in. Oh. So we've made it here to our test climb, and it's about 200 metres long. It's about 17%, Ooh. and it's going to be a tough one. I'm interested to see what's better. I think I know that the clips pedals I'll be more comfortable on, but how much of a difference is what I really want to know. Yeah, I think I think it could be quite a bit of a difference, especially on the steep bits. Well, that's it, yeah. We are going to be recording power and time this time. I'm going to compare the difference between the both pedals. Do you fancy going first? I'll go first, and I'm going to do Take one my for the team. Uh, trainers. Flats first. Flats first. Are you ready, Manon? Yeah. You're you start, gonna, starting in the in the. Start, you got to start from the dirt, 100. percent In the in the sand. Are you going to um? Are you going to give me a? Uh, I'll count you in. Count me in. Right. Be careful now. Don't don't go slipping and sliding that. Slipping and sliding. Right. Ready? Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Oh, great thing is, no need to worry about clipping in. Not feeling as confident for this one. You just can't pull up on the pedals. All my weight is pushing that on them. I naturally want to pull up, but just can't. The end is in sight. That was horrendous. Right, Manon. 
That's it. Thanks for that, Hank. Right, Hank left me in his pile of dust once again. So I'm left to start myself off. Thanks, Hank. Right, flat pedals, here we come. In three, two, one, go. Oh, oh that does not feel good. Oh, that feels awful. Oh my. That felt so much harder than it should for the power that I did. Oh. All right, I need to recover for the next run. Oh, I might need to give me a minute. Oh, nice work, Manon. Oh, that was tough. It's that, not easy. That was hard. Tough, yeah. Are you ready for your clip? It's going to feel like a dream going up it there is. with clipless. I'm looking forward to getting out of the pedals and just dancing on the pedals like Contador. Right. Not you, quite Contador. You can but... set me off. OK. All ready. Three, two, one, go. Up, 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 up. Nice clipping. Straight away. Feel much better on the bike. That is definition line. Oh. Minute efforts are absolutely savage. 20 seconds, you can hold on that max power, but a minute just seems to drag on. Have to say, gosh, I feel just so much more comfortable with clipping pedals. I can use that pull up, especially when out the saddle. Feels like a gain an extra 50%. Like genuinely, it feels just a thousand times better. Right, I'm gonna get back and start man on off. Oh, these efforts don't get easier. Right, man on's final run. Are you ready, man on? Yeah. Are you pumped for this? Oh, I'm scared. Right. Five, four, three, two. One, go! Yeah. They make it look so much easier when they do that. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Go on, saddle! Get out of the saddle! It feels nice to get out of the saddle. Thanks. I was quicker. Thank God for that. Right, that's the hill climb over and done with. Slightly recovered. A minute efforts are tough, aren't they? It was, it was pretty savage. Right, shall we have a run through the results? Let's see the results. Done, done, done. Right, flat pedals first. Yeah. I did it in a time of one minute, 10 seconds. Nice. Good and time, And my watts was 380 watts. Oh. I was quite pleased with that. That's good. Yeah. Well, I did a time on the flats, 54 seconds up the climb, and I averaged 430 watts. Nice. How do you think it, how did it feel? Oh, I just, it just didn't feel good for me. It felt, for the amount of watts I did, it felt like a lot harder yeah. effort than that. I felt I was working really hard to put out not that much power. Clipless pedals. I did it at a time of 57 seconds oh. and an average watts of 485. So quite a big jump in power there. That is a big jump in yeah. power. It just shows, isn't it, what you're what you're comfortable with and using that upstroke on the pedal. It felt so much better. So much better. So much. So I did it at a time of 41 seconds. I was pretty quick, pretty happy life. with it. And I did it on 580 watts. Woo! So yeah, pretty Juicy. happy with that. Yeah, not bad. No. But what I really want to know is the detail about why it's so much more efficient with clipless pedals. So I think it's about time we get back on our bikes and we try and find an expert. Yeah, we're not really experts. Though. Well, we've done the tests. We're or halfway there. Things, yeah. So from our practical test, we can see that riding clipless pedals is more efficient. But what I want to know is what an expert says about this topic. So I've been in contact with Brian from The Bike and The Body to find out a little bit more about what is the perfect pedaling technique. So Brian, when we're looking at pedaling technique, flat versus clipless, what is the most efficient? How do you get rid of that dead spot? Do you get the dead spot more riding flats versus clipless? Well, that's a great question, Hank. Um, unfortunately, at present, the answer is there's no conclusive research as to what the best pedaling technique actually is. 
there's been plenty of research looking into the topic, but the reality is that we learn pedaling in very unique and individual ways. And as a result of that, whether we're clipped in or not, it's a very difficult topic to assess. The other side to that is that there's lots of other factors involved. So whether we're talking about pedaling efficiency, pedaling effectiveness, core stability and trunk stability on the bike, muscle activation patterns and so forth. Now there is some good research that does look at different pedaling techniques. So they compared pedaling with your preferred technique, pushing, pulling, and pedaling in circles. And what they found conclusively was that pulling up was definitely less efficient. And then on the flip side to that, that preferred was the most efficient while circles and pushing was just shortly behind that. And the reality there is that it's likely that your preferred technique is more efficient because you've done it the most, you've practiced it a lot. Now, when it comes to clipless pedals hiding a dead spot, well, yes, it's possible. And the way that a rider might do that is by pulling up through that uh, dead spot that they might have otherwise had. But as we've already discussed, uh, pulling upwards on the pedal stroke is actually not a very efficient way to pedal. So when it comes to sprinting, where in the pedal stroke do we get the most power out? Yeah, so this depends on whether we're doing a seated sprint or an out of the saddle sprint. Uh, what we're looking at is where the angle of the crank arm is horizontal forward. So at that point we get the longest lever arm and therefore the most leverage through the pedal to create force. And at this point we see all of the muscles active that will produce force. So the quadriceps, the hamstrings, the glutes and the calves. And as such it's at that point through that 90 degree into the, into the pedal stroke where we see the most force being applied. And it's at this point also in sprints where we see a real difference between what clipless pedals can do for force production compared to flats. Do we use different muscles when we're riding flat pedals versus clipless? Yeah, I'd look at this in probably two different ways. So there's force producing muscles and in a flat pedal, because there's no inherent attachment, there is no ability to really use the hip flexors or the tibialis anterior muscle at the front of the shin. Now, as we've already mentioned, it's not that efficient to pull up on the pedal stroke anyway, so that's perhaps not the greatest loss. But the, the bit that I see as being more important is in a flat pedal condition, the intrinsic foot muscles, so that's all those small muscles in the foot, have to work incredibly hard to maintain grip on the pedal and stability in the foot. And that comes at a massive energy cost, which may well reduce your overall efficiency as well. Thank you very much to our expert, Brian, for explaining that to us. And there we have it, clipless versus flats. Let us know in the comments section below what you thought and what you prefer using, clipless or flat pedals. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a cheeky thumbs up.